Chapman, who's your first comedian of the night, who's actually a returning Laugh Index Theater player. He's wonderful, really amazing. Give it up for Clyde! What's up, y'all? So, uh, a little bit about me. I am gentlemanly as fuck, all right? This is the thing. I have spent so much money to learn how to be a gentleman. I bought at least 10 books on etiquette. I've read like three of them. And like, for real, like how to be a gentleman, a gentleman entertains and a gentleman at home. It's basically like meet a girl, impress a girl, make sure she finishes first. So, <laughs> right? And, 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 and I'm so, I, I like love the thought of it, right? But this is the thing that really throws me off is, is people always say, oh, it, it costs you nothing to have class. And I challenge that because I'm really cheap, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about it where I seem to like, where my gentlemanliness and my cheapness oversect the most is what I call tipping culture. So I'm just completely off the guy. All right, like it only makes sense in one instance, you know. Like I get it if you go to a restaurant, they get like a dollar an hour. Like and, and obviously math is easy. Like it's just like multiply by two, do some weird decimal thing. You're good. Like you can control that. But it's the rest of the world that expects tips that really upset me. Okay, like my barber. Right, I go to my barber, I get a haircut. It's twenty five bucks. I just went to the ATM, I give him $40, he gives me 10 back, and I'm just like, uh, math, dude, no. That's not how that works. And then he like skips through all the fives to give me five ones, and he's like, oh, my bad. And I'm like, I'm just gonna take that, thank you. And it's kind of this weird stare down where he's like, um, and I'm like, thanks, I look great. So, <laughs> because the thing is, like, if he wanted $30, just tell me it's $30. Like, there's no signs on the wall, when I'm done, I'm just like, how much? You set the price. I went with it. Like, this was your fault. <laughs> so, I mean, that's always frustrating. Another one that gets me, I don't know if anybody here travels. Do people travel? Here, right? You may have went to this uh, magical land uh, called New Jersey. And, <laughs> and if you've ever had to, like, get gas in New Jersey, there's, like, a dude with five teeth, like, pumping your gas, and then he just, like, looks at your window. <laughs> When he's done, he's like, hey, uh, that'll be 30 bucks. And I'm like, thank you. Uh -huh. And he kind of just keeps looking at it. And then he walks in front of your car, like, no, that'll be 30 bucks plus tip. I'm like, I can do this myself. <laughs> like, like, I have legs and arms. It's weird, right? Like, I know how to physically pump gas. I wasn't born here. So, it's a thing, Jersey people. It's all good. Whatever. You'll figure it out later. <laughs> so, I mean, it just frustrates. And uh, don't let me forget the biggest one. Okay. I don't know if everyone's experienced this, but if you've ever been to like a really nice bar and you go to use the restroom, <laughs> and there's this dude that's just in the restroom, just hanging out, <laughs> right? He usually is dressed like kind of nice, so at first you think like, oh, he's a patron, but no, he's not. He's gonna pump your soap and give you paper towels, all for a tip. And in my head, I'm like, I don't know what choices you made in life. <laughs> <laughs> where your best job op option was to be the bathroom dude, but I do know they were all the wrong ones. <laughs> and I'm not tipping. I don't want your little like poop mitts. Honestly, like you weren't even there for the hard part. <laughs> I did all the heavy lifting myself. <laughs> this is the thing, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like. But I, really, I don't get value. Like I get that this is services and there's a value to it, but I don't get value. You know what I mean? I know very, very little about like how things work and why things are the way they are. Like all I really know about value is like, like we don't market to rich people. Like that kind of makes weird sense to me. But also like if you pass two dollar stores in like three blocks you're in the hood. Yeah. Like dollar stores don't advertise, they just pop up and it's like, hey, your property value went down. <laughs> but I really want to know, like the first one, like why don't we market and advertise to rich people? How do rich people know what to spend all of their money on? So I like, I made it a point to take a field trip to the richest place I know, Bethesda. And, <laughs> which is a very dangerous proposition for a black dude from something. Like, I, like, I have 
white friends and they come to visit me and they're like, oh, this is so exhilarating. No. I went to Bethesda <laughs> and every cop literally stopped in the middle of the street, like not even at the light. It was just like, you okay, son? <laughs> like, Obviously not. <laughs> right? So it's just like, what I noticed when I was out there is that all of these rich people play tennis. And then I started thinking that must be how we know to advertise to them, how to tell them what to buy. So I watched all the tennis tournaments. It's like four of them. <laughs> and the problem was, like, most of them, I can't afford that shit. So, like, one is sponsored by American Express, one is sponsored by Rolex, one is sponsored by Lacoste, but I want to be rich, and I'm going to fake it until I make it. And my next car is going to come from the, the sponsor of the Australian Open. I'm getting a Kia, y'all. It's a big day. <laughs> Thanks for y'all time. <laughs>